Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Sweet Art Crafts. In this Watch Me Resin, I'll be showing you guys the process of how I made these spooky season bats. Before getting into the rest of this video, I just wanted to reiterate the epoxy resin safety. Make sure that you are wearing nitro gloves and are working in a well ventilated room with the windows open. A garage or a porch is preferable. And also make sure that you are wearing a respiratory mask that uses vapor filters. In this clip here, you guys can see I'm putting on my nitro gloves and usually nitro gloves come in this blue color and the respiratory mask that I use is by the 3M brand and it has vapor filters. Here are the supplies that I will be using to make these charms for this video. These beads are available on my website sweetartcrafts.com and they are part of my Halloween collection. The silicone molds that I'll be using in my video are my bat shaker designs. I have them in a mini size and this bigger size on my website sweetartcrafts.com. For the first layer, I'm going to start pouring the clear cast 7050 resin into a cup and then I'm going to mix the resin and the hardener together. This is a 2 to 1 ratio resin, so you pour two parts of the resin and then one part hardener. I really do 
like this resin I've been using it for a while now because in my last video I said it was my first time trying it out and I've been using it for a month now and I think it is my favorite resin so far I wouldn't recommend it for doming just because of the viscosity is very low but it's perfect for making clear pieces and adding color to this resin has been really good as well so as you guys already saw, I separated the resin into three cups and I added the black resin dye into the first cup and I added some holographic glitter. I'm going to do the same thing with one of the other cups and I'm going to use orange paint and I'll be adding some white resin dye just because I want the color to be a little bit more opaque. It does give a little bit of a pastel look to it but I was okay with that and then the other one I will be leaving it clear because for the first layer I want to use the clear to mix the black and the orange together in certain parts. So I'm going to start off with the clear resin first and I'm just going to place it around the rim of the mold because I'm only doing the resin around the rim and then I'll be adding the black and orange. I do the clear layer first just so that it can make the colors mix a little bit better instead of just going in with the orange and black first. After using the heat gun to pop some of the bubbles, I'm going to get started with the orange resin and you can see it, I'm just placing it randomly and now I'm going to go in with the black. To further mix the colors, I'm going to use the clear and certain parts of it because if I left it how it is, the colors will come out a little bit blocky so that's why I use the clear to just mix everything a little bit more so that the colors look a little bit more seamless. I'm just going to repeat the same steps with the bat at the top and then it's okay if there's resin on the cavity of the mold because we will just clean that up later once the resin has cured for a bit. I waited 12 hours before I did the back layer of this charm. You guys can see I'm taking a silicone brush just to pick up that one big piece of resin. And then I'm going to take packing tape to pick up the little tiny pieces that you guys can't see. For the back layer, I'll be using the same resin as I did earlier and I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, when I mix the resin and the hardener together, I do transfer it into another cup after 3-5 to five minutes of mixing because I want to make sure that the resin is completely mixed and pouring it into a new cup and mixing it again for another 2 minutes allows the resin to really be fully mixed and I noticed that I don't have as many problems as I did before where my resin wasn't always mixed and I would get soft pieces. Now I'm going to use the black resin dye as I used earlier and I won't be using as much because I wanted to have a little bit of a see-through effect but with black in it and I'm going to be adding some mica pigments to give a glittery effect to it. As I was pouring the resin for the back layer of the charms, I decided to add a couple of more drops of the black resin dye and I hardly mixed it so that it can give this wispy effect to the back of the charms.
Even though this resin does cure very fast, I did wait the full 24 hours before demolding them and you guys can see the wispy effect that I did in the from the last clip and it came out so cool. I really like the effect. It gives like a little bit of a spookiness to it. So to make the little balls that were in the shaker part of the charm, I used polymer clay and then I used rubbing alcohol to roll them into the ball form. When I first did this method in one of my other videos, um, somebody recommended that I use rubbing alcohol instead of water and I really prefer the rubbing alcohol. It does bleed the color just a little bit, but it does make it easier to make the ball form. It didn't take as long as it did with the water and I never knew you could use rubbing alcohol with polymer polymer clay so thank you to that person funnily enough even though I'm showing you guys how I made these balls with the green I ended up not using them because I felt like the color clashed a little bit too much with my pieces but here are all of the balls done and I'm going to bake them in the oven on a baking tray for about three to six minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit you don't want to bake them too at a higher temperature because they will burn I have done this multiple times where they've turned out black and I was just so sad but here they are done and and now I'm going to start filling my charms. I got these cobweb um, pieces at Dollar Tree and this was like over a year ago. So and when I went back the other day I did not see them but you can easily find them on Etsy. And then the beads are beads that I sell on my website. After playing around with the shaker fillings for a while, these are the pieces that I ended up going with. I think they look super cute. To give it an even more glittery effect, I did add some black glitter into the shaker portion. For these charms, I decided to try out a new way in how I fill them. One of my subscribers recommended that I watch Amy Made here on YouTube. She has been working with resin for a long time and she has very informational videos. In her shaker tutorial, she had a second method where you do not have to drill into the actual charm. I have tried out a few different ways that I've seen other people do it, but they just didn't work out for me. But this way did and I really love it because it was simple. So I already traced the charms with my sharpie pen and I wiped them clean with rubbing alcohol. Now I'm going to take a 1 16th inch hole puncher and I'm going to punch a hole in where I want to fill, fill the piece with baby oil. And after I've done that, I'm going to um, start gluing it onto the piece. I'm also going to try out a new method in how I apply my transparency film and UV resin to the piece. Typically what I do is apply the UV resin to the charm and then just go in with the transparency over it. But the UV resin and the transparency film usually shift from where I want it to be and sometimes it goes over the edge and then the UV resin gets into the actual charm itself and when you're curing the UV resin it makes those pieces get stuck. As you guys just saw, I used a toothpick to apply the UV resin to a small portion of the charm and then I took my tweezers to make sure that it was centered perfectly and everywhere had the transparency film and it wasn't overhanging in certain areas and then certain areas didn't have enough and then I cured it for with my UV light for about maybe 30, to, 30 seconds to a minute and now I'm going to take the UV resin on the toothpick and go around the rim of the rest of the charm. I did this section by section just because for me, I'm working with three lights, so the UV resin does cure faster and I don't really want that to happen. But if you're not working with bright lights like I am, you can just apply the UV resin all in one go after you've done that first small little section and then cure it.
I repeated the same process on the smaller shaker bat as well and this is how they turned out before adding baby oil. Now I'm going to start adding baby oil into the charms. I used a precision tip bottle and I put it through the hole that I made with the hole puncher and I'm just adding the baby oil. You don't want to add too much baby oil because you want to leave a little bit of an air bubble so that the pieces are able to move around easily. And the only issue that I have with this method is that the baby oil will pour out onto the piece if you pour too much as well. So all you have to do is take rubbing alcohol and clean it and now I'm taking a cube tip with some more rubbing alcohol I'm really cleaning the area where I put the baby oil through and I'm going to take my UV resin and put a dot of it there and quickly pick up my um, UV light to cure it and this is how the charms turned out I really love this method because I just think the charms look better without having too many holes in them from drilling so that you can fill them but now i'm going to add some stickers onto the um, charms i cut these out on my cricut i do have a tutorial on how i do this so click the i card above and now i'm going to clean the pieces first with rubbing alcohol so that there's no dust on them because right after i apply the stickers i'm going to go straight into doming and i don't want to have to clean the stick the charms after i already applied the stickers because i don't want any of the paper towel um, stuff to get stuck onto there because it will you will be able to see it on the charms because I've done that before so I just applied the um, stickers onto the charms I used transfer tape to apply it I don't think they're completely centered so I know that I didn't get it that way but oh well I'm going to get straight into doming the pieces. I will be using Promarine resin, which I don't even think I'll be recommending anymore for doming just because I noticed that it does yellow easily now or I don't know if it's the batch or whatever, but I've noticed that some of my older pieces they're yellowed even though they weren't even near sun so I did buy a new resin for doming that Amy made recommended so I'll be using that in my next video which will be another Halloween um, type video so I'm just not going to recommend this one but I'll be using it in this video anyway since I didn't even get it until today. I do have a full tutorial on how I dome my charms. If you click the i card above, you can watch that video. I might be redoing my how I do my shaker charms video and the doming video just because I have learned a lot of new ways to do things over the past year since I did make those videos over a year ago. And if I really do like these methods and these new products, I will definitely make a new tutorial if you guys would like me to. After 24 hours, this is how the pieces look like with their dome. Um, but since I don't plan on selling these charms just because of the doming resin that I use, I'm not liking it anymore. I only did the one layer of doming. But um, now I'm going to start attaching the pieces, the jump ring and the keychain part to the um, charms. I already drilled a hole and added the eye screws and I secured them with UV resin. It's just a bit hard for me to do that on camera so that's why I already did it. And I used two pliers to open the jump ring and then to close them. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did try a couple of new methods for things and I really do think that they helped my charms come out a bit better and I really like that first method. So thank you to whoever recommended me to watch Amy Made because that video was so helpful. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like this video and share it with your friends and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye now.